Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope we are well. It is time for the agony on to be unleashed. I like to think that these are kind of like tough love agony aunt vids, you know? Just say so how it is in that kind of big sisterly friend way. You know, if you were my friend, we were friends and we're just chatting here, this is what I would tell you. I'm not professional in any juncture, <laughs> neither do I claim to be. And also, you know, if you don't like my if you don't like what I have to say, then that's fine. It's the way we have opinions, right? Or we, or we have views on things. Hear, hear different perspectives. I'm going to start with this one. My partner has just been told he has ADHD. How, if possible, can I adapt to support him? I've been doing reading online, so there's plenty for me to try. But I wondered if you had any personal experiences to help me change or see from an ADHD brain perspective. I wanted to help without seeming like a, I'm parenting. I want to be his partner, not his mum. I think that's a really, really great thing to say is that you want to be his partner and not his mum because I think it's really important to give people the space to figure this stuff out for themselves and work on themselves and them that time to figure out like coping mechanisms and how to make their own life easier but I think from a, a partner's perspective what is required is just a bit of I don't know how to hold this mic is probably just a bit of patience and understanding um and also like try and not be frustrated with things that they do that is kind of annoying but also like because of their ADHD obviously I don't for one second think it's cool to use ADHD or any other neurodivergencies to not behave badly or be a, be a dick you know like it's not an ex it's not always an excuse for it's, uh, basically don't use it as a crutch to be able to just get out, get out of doing things or have responsibilities because I think that as much as it can be frustrating to to forget to do things or like be late for example I don't think people don't intentionally do it and that's that that's the difference I think it's important to have that differentiation between um like being their partner and not being not being a parent they don't need mummying I just think it requires a lot of patience and understanding and also if they find things emotionally difficult um if their moods like for me obviously like I suffer a lot with like mood dysregulation and having overwhelming emotions which sometimes can lead to like extreme sadness or extreme like rage and not being able to kind of like which are over and done with really really quickly um I actually watch a really great um TikTok or real with a professor talking about that and it was just so insightful and interesting to see I actually I can't fucking find it I went back to go watch part two but I couldn't find it got distracted and typical just lost it but it's just hearing how, why the brain is sometimes so explosive but no having someone that is just patient is really important and um doesn't really bat an eyelid when you know, you're chatting to them and they just get distracted really quickly by something they've seen over there like it just continue like that's normal you know it's not like oh for god's sake you're off you're off on one again or make you feel bad don't like belittle them for for their quirks or the things that are very adhd just take it in your stride that's all it is i don't think you really need to do too much like yes it's really lovely that you want to be a supportive partner but i think it's just understanding their struggles communicating the struggles and if they have any particular way that they need you to be supportive because they might not they might be like you know what? I'm cool. I just just need just a bit of patience. For 32 years, I've been way too nice, aka a doormat. Is it too late for me to do a 180? And how can I? Well, I don't think maybe maybe not a full 180 because you don't want to turn into a dick, but you can at least do 90 degrees. I don't think there's anything wrong in not being a doormat. And I think that um, putting your needs first and like setting your own boundaries with people is so important to have a healthy relationships. And um, I've kind of adopted that a bit more in more recent years. Like, I, I joke about it and I say, this is the year where I'm going to be a dickhead. And I don't mean actually specifically being a dickhead and being nasty to people. But um, I think sometimes when you're too nice, people really fucking do treat you like a doormat. And they, and they you know, like if you set a boundary, this is why a boundary is so important, right? If you set a boundary with someone and you, and you don't honour your own boundary, like the elasticity of that boundary just becomes looser and looser and looser and then then you're kind of left with none and people just sort of like take advantage of you or they take you for granted and they don't respect you so I think it's really 
it is important to kind of at times put your foot down and say no or no I can't do that or I'm not going to do that or, I don't want to do that um or I'm not I'm not comfortable with this I don't want to do that do you know what I mean like just being like I don't want to or I'm not going to allow this to happen because I feel like it's affect it's going to affect me more than it's going to you know it's going to affect me more and I don't want it to so absolutely not it's not too late to start putting your foot down and like just honoring yourself I suppose I think it's really important to do that always wanted to make videos but scared of the cancel culture part of social media well as long as you're not doing anything wrong then I don't suppose you would be cancelled I think the people that are cancelled are usually people that consistently do stuff wrong or they have fucking terrible views or right or they are disgenuinely sorry about stuff you can't be afraid of cancel culture if you've got good intentions and you're not doing anything wrong you know it's like being scared to cross the road because you might get hit by a bus you, you still cross the road. You can't be afraid of a what if, because it might not happen. Just got to go do it. I have a massive crush on my mother-in-law. Help me. Uh, well, all I will say is, um, I mean, don't act on that, because that's awkward. You've got good things to come, right? G- genetically. Uh, no, I don't, I don't actually know what to say about that. I think that's that's pretty, um, that's pretty, that's pretty, um, that's pretty black out, isn't it? Oh dear. Um, yeah, don't tell anybody that you have a crush. Just, ah, uh, awkward. Sorry. For once I am bamboozled. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> when did you take the leap to go full self-employed? I think when I was at a point where I was consistently earning enough money that I was comfortable living off and I could like see future potential and opportunity and that it was like hello ongoing like I knew the business was coming in um I think when you first go self-employed it's a lot of graft but I know it's really tempting to stay within that stability of being employed by someone and like having a side hustle but taking the leap to go self-employed is so great and being your own boss is amazing I think when you get to a point yeah where you feel comfortable that actually the money that I'm making from this side hustle is actually sufficient and I could I could do this because it's a it's about investment in your time and yourself taking that leap scary but it's it's great so worth it but also like if it all falls through which um it probably will not there's always the option of going back into employment it's not the end of the world. What do you believe is the best self-care when you just came out of an awful relationship? I really think investing time in yourself and rebuilding your own confidence within yourself and your own like appreciation for yourself because often when you're in a bad relationship, it can really knock your, um, obviously knock your confidence, your self-esteem, um, makes you feel really low. And I think that rebuilding those foundations of self and creating new memories for yourself um it just creates this amazing foundation for confidence independence and um kind of washes away those blues you know so yeah just investing time in yourself whether that is like I don't know like it could be anything hobbies going out more um making plans for yourself making plans of friends um doing stuff that you find really fulfilling self-care just really grow back the love for yourself how to break up with a friend i have grown out of our friendship and frankly don't like them i think you might need to have a conversation with them maybe don't say as bluntly as i don't like you anymore but um perhaps just say maybe like distance yourself a little bit gradually and then um maybe maybe wait till they come to you and say like is everything okay I've not really heard from you much and just be like I've just been making I've just been distancing myself recently because I actually feel like we've grown apart and I just needed the space I don't think that this friendship this friendship's not I don't know making me feel particularly good about myself perhaps a bit of space will help but you definitely need to need to have an honest conversation in a way, have a conversation which is in a way not too gut-wrenchingly hard for them to listen to. But I'd go down the route of like, I feel like we're growing apart and our, our view, or 
you know, our interests are different and our ways of looking at the world are different. And I don't know if I, we really align anymore. <laughs> so I, I just had to, my friend Katie, my friend Katie that I go on burger dates with, she's like, why are there never enough pickles on my burger? <laughs> <sighs> completely besotted of a colleague and I'm certain he feels the same colleagues keep making comments about us I have a boyfriend though help uh, dear, this is a bit awkward, isn't it? well ask yourself who would you rather be with are you unhappy in your relationship how come you're besotted with this guy? Is it because he's giving you attention? How would you feel if you ended your relationship for this this other person? It's very tricky because you don't want to gauge the conversation with him just in case he doesn't feel that way. And then he and then and then he finds out and then your boyfriend finds out that you love some like you've got feelings for someone else. That's that's a really, really tricky, tricky one. I think you need to ask yourself like actually the questions of your current situation with your partner and are you actually happy with your current partner and if you are happy with them then why are you having feelings for someone else are you truly happy with your partner i think that that's a real that's a corker of one is there any way to subtly float the boat to 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 see if he bites the bait do you know what i mean like this is true you got me bamboozled on this one as well actually okay let me just think about this for a second okay i'd be quick i'll be seriously questioning um why i feel about someone like this when i have a partner you know what even maybe even just ask the questions to your colleague like just just say is there something between us like i'm getting a vibe here and if they say no then you're like cool then there's no if they say yeah then you're like oh, okay oh, cool and then you're like okay how do i want to act do i want to end things with my partner and pursue this thing with this colleague i wouldn't cross over do not do that that's unsavory um but yeah particularly be asking the question as to why you've got feelings for someone else when you have a boyfriend Ooh, ah. Ooh, sticky sticky in fact actually this is such a sticky question i'm going to open this as an opportunity to other for other people to put their their two pence in and what they think about this situation because this is a really sticky one and i and i don't want to be responsible for anything that happens because if you were my friend right now i'd be going like this oh my god no what the hell what are we gonna do this would be a lengthy process of how to handle it we'd be we'd be having a bottle of rosé in the garden put trying to figure it out we haven't got time for that right now have we i have been offered a new job and i'm struggling with feeling confident i'll do a good job well right you've been offered you've been offered the job that's a good place to start the fact that they've given you the job right and this imposter syndrome is so common with new job opportunities especially if it's like a new role that you've not really done before or it's a little bit different to previous job roles like it is something that happens all the time it doesn't mean that you are incapable of doing the job clearly you are because they wouldn't have offered it to you and also like I think workplaces often that's why you have a probation to see how you're getting on see how you are adapting to the role and um, they're not going to be like you need to be good at this job immediately like everybody takes time to ease into a new position and get used to the, like how you do things I definitely think that you should fucking go for it because I'm, I'm a firm believer that if anything is scary, that it's probably a good thing because being uncomfortable is a sign of growth. Anything that's challenging or uncomfortable or tests you is like, is the test, is the test to, you know, progress, to evolve, to grow as a person. So don't be afraid. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder and go, I got the job, let's fucking smash it. I've been dealing with a lot of anger, rage and frustration, how to deal with it in healthy ways. So, I mean, I know my anger and my rage comes from having ADHD and also like hormonal imbalances. And I know at times that, that the rage is, the rage is that talking and I don't let it control, I don't want it to control me. And I don't want that to be like, to control me and my reactions and, you know, create situations or I don't want to be that person. And I think that when you're feeling rage and you're feeling frustration, first up asking, is this coming from somewhere? Is there a reason for this rage or this frustration? Could it be anything hormonal related? And also, well, like, why is it causing such 
is the rage is the is what's happening associated with something else that could be triggering that initial rage at that moment I definitely am a firm believer is taking yourself away from a situation and giving yourself to calm down and reflect and then perhaps like come back to it with more of a calm and thought through response I think you just need to give yourself a bit of time and space emotionally but also start inwardly thinking about where is this coming from I can't motivate myself to finish any of my projects. I have a list of things to do, but I never start. I sometimes find that when you have a big list of things to do, that the overwhelmment of those is just enough for you to not want to start any of them because you're just like, fuck, there's just so much. I can't, I ain't got any space for this in my brain. It's too much to think about. Um, And one thing that my therapist told me to do, and I've, I've kind of adopted a way of doing this, is basically putting all these things in boxes and imagine all these boxes are like running down your hallway. So whilst you've got this one box, you don't think about any of the other boxes. So you just concentrate on one box at a time and you don't think about any other, like you don't think of any other box until that box is empty or whatever, you put it to the side onto the next box. And I kind of do this in a way like, I think there's so many things in my house that I need to sort out. Like my old office space, which was at the end of my garden, that's it's empty, but also a bit of a shithole, just full of rubbish and like shit. And I want to turn it into a guest room and I need to get it done by my Jimmy Buffett party in August because I've got people staying with me. But oh my God, do you ever scratch your ear and you're just like, oh, fuck, that feels great. Oh, I want to get a Q-tip in there, but I shouldn't. Oh. And then I've got like other things that I need to do. I need to call a builder or I need to, I really need to regret the bathroom or I really need to sort something out in the garden. I'm thinking all these things that I need to do with the house. And I'm just like, I, I can't start because I've got, where do I start? Where do I start? So what I do is I put these particular projects in my diary. So I'm scheduled for this weekend to make a start on the guest room and I won't start another project until that is finished. So I think there's a little bit of discipline there, but it's also just like kind of like putting these projects into little boxes or like points in your diary and you ain't going to focus on them until you need to. And it's like a classic saying of this isn't a worry for now, that's a worry for later. So you just don't think about these things until you've got the time for it. So just compartmentalize everything, put it in its areas that it needs to go in and then just focus one at a time. Don't think of everything at once. Living alone and starting to feel very alone, especially as friends have all partners slash plans. Any tips? Oh my God, I can totally relate to this. Ah. I only have like a couple of single friends, Heidi and my friend Todd, and I hang out with them quite a lot. I know the feeling because like most of my friends are in relationships or like got babies and married and you ask them, you gonna do something with the weekend? Oh, I can't do that. I've only got this time. I've only got an hour free on like Saturday. Like, and it has, you know, but I've got to be back, blah, 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 like, it's kind of frustrating at times. But you know what? I've been doing loads of shit on my own. I get it's nice to do stuff with people and having friends around you and having people around you. But like, there's actually so much joy in dating yourself and doing activities of yourself and um, just being like, what do I want to do today? I really want to go to the cinema. Oh, but going to cinema on your own is limp. No, it's not. I really want to go to the beach day. Okay, cool. Let's go have a beach day. Like, I just love doing activities on my own because... I can get get there when I get want to get there. No one else is going to make you late. You ain't going to be back for anybody. You're not on anyone's time. You're on your own time. But also, if you do want friends, I've met a few people through my gym that have kind of opened up my circle a bit more, like a few more girls at the gym that are even newbies or um, or I've just not really spoken to that much before that I've actually like, not, oh, I've actually started talking to, not like that, but like sometimes, because I go to a morning boot camp, some of the evening boot campers have come started coming in the morning. So I've got to know new, like members that I never spent time with because we went at different times. And just like, for example, me and a couple of girls are going to have a wholesome weekend because one <laughs> my friend Tara from the gym is like, I'll just keep going out and get them wasted all the time. Teach me how to be, teach me how to be wholesome and not get out and get shit faced. So I'm like, we can do that gonna have a lovely day together and you're not gonna touch a drop of alcohol all right but yeah it's just joining clubs or groups or gyms as well like I I really truly believe in that but there are so many groups also on Facebook that are like single people groups or like you know walking groups there's like a local dog walking group on my Facebook that um, I've not yet gone out with but it's there popping off and I do sometimes reply so that's quite nice but I completely understand the frustration but um, yeah I would just say fall in love with spending time with yourself and going and doing great things and don't be afraid to it's, it's fucking great always comparing myself to others especially my partner's ex oh my god I know, I know that feeling I know that fe- I've done that before I've done that before but do you know what the reality of the situation is he's of you he's not with her 
So why are you wasting brain space comparing yourself to someone that's no longer in his life? Why, oh, why do we compare ourselves to people's exes? The root I feel is that they're going to miss their ex and prefer their ex to you and want to get back with their ex. Saying that out loud sounds so fucking stupid because they're not with their ex. They're with you and they're choosing to spend time with you. They're choosing to be with you. That's the rational. That's the, that's the reality of the situation. So just every, when you get those intrusive thoughts coming in, just bash them out with a bit of reality, okay? And also stop comparing yourself. It's very, very fucking difficult too because we all do it. We live in this social media world where everybody is putting all their highlights out there as though they're the reality of their life. You just got to take everything with a pinch of salt, okay? You are enough of, as you are and who you are. Remember that. <laughs> Being in a relationship for three years, but I'm starting to dream about sex with another person. I personally wouldn't worry about that. It happens. Like the amount of times I've dream cheated. You wake up, you feel weird for a few hours in the morning. You're like, oh my God, what does this mean I'm in love with this person? I'm apparently in love with Wolverine and various other people from my past, but I'm not. It's a dream. Don't overthink it. It doesn't really mean anything. Just dreaming it. Dreams are great. What did I dream of? I said, I'm really weird. It'd been a full moon the other night and I had, I dreamt some, I had a dream that all of the walls in my house were leaking. Like every wall was just pissing with water and I couldn't, we couldn't find the, the root of the cause. I had loads of people over. My ex was over. My dad was over. Ryan Gosling was over. Couldn't figure it out. <laughs> oh. How do I stop being a doormat and shying away from literally all conflict? I think standing up for yourself is so important. Also choosing when to stand up for yourself is also important. Choosing your moments to have arguments because sometimes I do believe that we can start arguments when it's not really an issue. I think everything, when it comes to confrontation and relationships with people, I think we need to allow the space for a moment of going, am I actually annoyed by this or am I choosing to be annoyed because I feel like I should be you know what I mean like I do think the shoulds play such a big part in our decision making in every aspect of life just because you might have a mate in your ear going you should be so annoyed by that that's such dickish behavior but if you truly feel like something is not an issue or you're not bothered by it don't waste the energy Unless it is like, unless it's a situation where someone's taking advantage of you, someone is manipulating you or gaslighting you. The more you're a doormat, the more people will walk over you, basically. You are literally subjecting yourself to how people view you. And I think that there is nothing wrong with biting back every now and then and standing your ground and aligning yourself with your own moral compass. If you don't think, if you're not comfortable with a situation or you think that um, if someone make, trying to make you feel bad, like firm be firm but fair and say I disagree or I don't appreciate this or I don't like this behavior and I think sometimes that might take people by surprise and it might be like the new new way of navigating yourself and also finding people fucking respecting you a bit more and 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 not walking all over you because people can do that and, and it's really shitty also like you know what's the worst thing that's going to happen what's the worst thing that's going to happen like you might have even more of an argument or a conflict or they might just be taken aback a bit and go, oh, okay, fair enough. Nothing terrible is going to happen from you speaking out a bit more and standing up for yourself. The only, it's just going to benefit you and you're going to regain a bit of self-confidence by doing so. It's been four months, he's moved on and I can't, what do I do? Okay, everybody takes time. Everybody's like time slash calendar slash perception of time is different my perception of time is absolutely fucked something a week ago feels like two months ago it's probably why I've moved on quite quickly in relationships because it felt it felt like forever since we broke up so the fact that he's moved on after four months that's his business the fact that you haven't that's your business and that's that's fine that you've not moved on or that you don't seem that you're over it he might not be over it he might have moved on and he probably still thinks about you I don't know but it doesn't reflect on your capability of moving on or finding someone new. I think rather than comparing yourself to him and how he's getting on, you should just be focusing, focusing on yourself and things that you need to do for yourself. And, you know, if it takes you another four months, that's fine. There isn't, there isn't a set time, time guide on how quickly you need to get over someone. And especially like it's not a competition. So I think what you need to do is give yourself 
be kinder to yourself and be patient with yourself and not get overwhelmed thinking about what he's up to, what he's doing. You know, this is your time to focus on you. I'm 27, I am work as a supervisor at my pub. Rent a flat with boyfriend, feel as though I need to get a proper job, feel like everyone has got it together by now, getting engaged, buying the first home. Okay, I've heard this so many times. Are you happy? And do you think that buying a home and getting engaged is gonna complete you? Because I can guarantee you it won't. I don't know why we as people, as society, especially like in your 20s, your late 20s, have this like obsession with getting engaged and buying a house and having a baby. Like you just have, you have to tick it off. And then once you've ticked it off, life is done. Signed, full stop. I did it. I did life. I did those things. It makes no sense. I've done it. I've been married. I've bought a house, right? I've been married four months, fucking got divorced, didn't I? I got my house, which I'm very proud of, but it's my house now and it's fully mine. But kids being engaged again, I don't, I don't give a shit. I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually just so happy living my life right now that they aren't even thoughts of mine. I don't even care about that. So stop looking at about what everyone else is doing. And you know, they might be like, oh, we're so happy we're engaged. We're having a baby. We're, we're, we've bought a house. Everyone seems great. Doesn't mean that that's going to make you happy. And it doesn't even mean that they're happy. Just people love to talk shit on social media. Some people are just in denial. And they think that by doing these things, they're going to fix their problems and make them happier people when it often doesn't. So are you happy? If you're happy, then that's all that fucking matters. Lots of people have asked me on my advice on date, on navigating the dating apps. Currently, I cannot be bothered. Just really like my own time and space. I think it's definitely something that takes, like, you have to apply yourself to. Another thing to do. <laughs> it's something that i just cannot be bothered to do right now it's been over a year and my partner won't allow me over his house like does he live on his own does he live with his parents has he got a reason for that i find that very odd you need to you need to figure this out you need to ask him what the dealio is and then decide i uh, I mean, is it a deal breaker? But it's kind of odd. It's kind of odd. Okay, last question. Do you believe in right person, wrong time? And what if they reappear in your life and say it's the right time? Um, I am a sucker for romance and I definitely believe in this. Um, obviously, you know, if the relationship didn't work out purely because it was like wrong timing, like you had different ideas that you wanted to do, like different points in your life and it wasn't a case of they treated you like shit and that you just didn't get on then fair enough but if it if it's just down to it was just purely the timing and you were on different pages in your life absolutely like isn't that romantic it's like the one that got away is back you know Abs I don't I have no I've I don't think that that's a bad thing I think that's actually quite cute and exciting oh give it another go Hope that was helpful to anybody that was going through similar dilemmas or to, uh, to, to those whose answers questions were answered. That was my agony aunt for this month. Thanks for participating and watching. Farewell.